We execute random processes as part of every aspect of our life every day. For example, suppose you're driving to a destination like a grocery store, or if you remember way back in the before times, driving to work. This is a random process with all sorts of influences from the weather, from other traffic. And in particular, the time that you stop when you get to your destination is not a predetermined time. It's not after 10 minutes or 11 minutes or an hour. It might be any one of those given the conditions outside. You stop at a random time. Now, using the notation that we developed in the last lecture, you can imagine that you're always going to stop at a stopping time because the time that you stop must be determined by events that have happened up to that time. You don't have information in the future that will tell you when you need to stop. Now, what that means in terms of the process is that the position where you stop is the random process evaluated at this random stopping time. So we need to figure out the intricacies of stopping a stochastic process at a random time hopefully at a stopping time. Generally speaking, if xn is any sequence of random variables defined on some measurable space, taking values in some other measurable space, and for the sake of this argument, we'll even allow x to be indexed by infinity, and if tau is any random time, taking values in the positive integers and infinity, then we can define x tau a new random variable whose value at an outcome omega in the probability space is x at the time tau of omega, which for each omega is some n, that's xn then, evaluated at omega. So this is our new random variable. Of course, we have to be clear, is it really a random variable? Is it measurable? Well, in this discrete context, it's always measurable. And that actually was something that you proved on the final exam for 280A. When later on we talk about the continuous time versions of these things, this becomes a lot dicier. But for now, we're sticking to discrete time. Now, suppose that our xn wasn't just any sequence of random variables, but was actually an adapted stochastic process. And in this case, if we're including x infinity, what that means is that in addition to xn being fn measurable, x infinity is f infinity measurable. Since xn is fn measurable for each n, we'd really like to establish some kind of sigma field f tau that describes the measurability class of this stopped random variable x tau. But what could we mean by f tau? One thing we're not going to mean by it is a random sigma field. That just introduces too much randomness into the problem. The underlying sigma field is a deterministic structure. Well, to figure out what this f tau should mean for this to work, let's look at what a canonical set in f tau should be. f tau is supposed to be constructed so that x tau is measurable. So let's look at a set of the form all those omega for which x tau is in b. We can decompose that set in terms of the values of the time tau. This is the union over all n less than or equal to infinity of the event that x tau is in b and tau is equal to n. But once we make that partition assumption that tau is equal to n in this union, we can replace this x tau with an xn. And now that's a little bit easier to understand. In particular, if I fix one n, then the event in that sum that tau is equal to n and x tau is in b is the event that tau is equal to n and xn is in b. And in particular, since xn is adapted, this event is in fn. We don't know much about this event for a general random time, but Let's now assume that tau is a stopping time. In that case, this is also in Fn, and so we see that this is in Fn. So what we have in general is that this will be a union of events indexed by n, each of which is in Fn. 
So in particular, this will be in F infinity, but that's not the strongest statement we want to make. We want to make this statement here. So that's going to be our definition provisionally of F tau. If tau is a stopping time, and we can see now why it's important to have this condition, then F tau is defined to be the set of all subsets of the probability space, which have the property which when intersected with the event that tau takes the value n, gives an event in Fn for each n less than or equal to infinity. Let's look at an example here, a dumb example actually. Suppose that we take tau to be the deterministic time k. By the way, it's easy to check from the definition that fixed deterministic times are in fact stopping times. And in fact, we'll see that basically in this calculation here. Then we can look at the intersection of the event that tau equals n with any set E. Well, tau is just equal to k. So the event that k is equal to n is either the whole space, in which case we get E here, or the empty set if n is equal to k or if n is not equal to k. So what that shows is since membership in F tau requires that this, whatever it is, for any n must be an Fn, well, that won't be any obstruction, but this one here shows us that that's going to be true if and only if E itself was in Fk, which is to say that F tau is equal to Fk, which is what we would really hope this sigma field to look like in the case that tau is equal to k. Now, just as we had for stopping times themselves, if we like, we can replace this condition that tau is equal to n with the condition that tau is less than or equal to n, and we'll get the same definition. And that's an exercise for you to work out on the back of an envelope. Let's prove some basic properties of this f tau. First things first, it's actually a sigma field. It is a sub-sigma field of f infinity, in fact. Moreover, the stopping time tau is f tau measurable. And Finally, if I have two stopping times, sigma less than or equal to tau, then the sigma field F sigma is contained in the sigma field F tau. Let's prove these turn by turn. First, to see that F tau is a sigma field, we just verify the three basic properties of sigma fields. The whole space omega is going to be in there because the intersection of omega with the event that tau equals n is just the event that tau equals n, and since tau is a stopping time, that's in Fn for every n, which is what it means for omega to be in F tau. Now, if E is any set in F tau, then if I take the intersection of its complement with the set where tau equals n, well, that's the definition of the difference, the event tau equals n minus E. But if I'm subtracting E, then I may as well subtract E intersected with tau equals n, since I'm subtracting from tau equals n. By assumption, since E is in F tau, this is in Fn. And so since this is also in Fn as tau is a stopping time, this is a difference of two Fn sets, which is therefore in Fn. That's for every n, and that shows that E complement is in F tau. And finally, if I have any countable sequence of sets in F tau, then if I take the intersection of the event that tau equals n with their intersection, that's just one big intersection. But since each ek is in f tau, that is the statement that this intersection is in fn for each n. And so this is a countable intersection of events in fn, which is therefore in fn. That shows that this countable intersection of any events from f tau is back in f tau. And that concludes the proof that f tau is a sigma field. Now we'd like to show that tau is measurable with respect to this sigma field. Since tau is a discrete random variable, it's good enough to show that the event that tau equals k is in that sigma field for every k. And so we just check what is the intersection here following the calculation we actually did on the last slide. That's equal to either the empty set if k is not equal to n or the event that tau equals n if k is equal to n, and either way, this is always in Fn for every n. And so that shows by definition that the event that tau is equal to k is in F tau for every k. So therefore, 
tau is f tau measurable. And finally, if I have two stopping times, sigma and tau, with sigma less than or equal to tau, if e is an event in f sigma, then we'd like to show that e is also in f tau. And we check that by checking if e intersect the event that tau is less than or equal to n is in fn. Well, we can write this as a further intersection of the event e intersected with the event that sigma is less than or equal to n intersected with the event that tau is less than or equal to n. And the reason for that is that this implies that the event that tau is less than or equal to n is contained in the event that sigma is less than or equal to n. So putting this doesn't add any additional constraint. But because e is in f sigma, this is in fn, and this is in fn because tau is a stopping time, and therefore this is in fn. That's true for every n, and so that shows that e is in f tau as claimed. And then finally, the claim that f tau is contained in f infinity follows right from here because tau is less than or equal to infinity, concluding the proof. So this f tau, which to belabor the point is a deterministic sigma field, does at least have the nice property that the stopping time tau itself is f tau measurable. Now remember, our hope was that this would be a sigma field with respect to which the stopped process x tau is going to be measurable if xn is any adapted process. And so we're going to prove that now, and actually more generally, we're going to characterize exactly what it means for any random variable to be f tau measurable. If tau is any stopping time and z is actually any function, real valued function, let's take for now, on the probability space, then the following are equivalent. z is f tau measurable. The cutoff of z on the event that tau is less than or equal to n is fn measurable for every n. You can also just do that cutoff with tau equal to n instead of less than or equal to n. And finally, z is actually equal to y tau, the stopped process for some adapted, real-valued stochastic process yn. So let's just take these in turn. Let's suppose that z is f tau measurable. That means that the event that z is in some measurable set b is in f tau for every b. And that means that for every b and for every n, this intersection is in fn. We'd like to demonstrate this property too holds now, and it turns out that to do that, we need to consider separately the two cases, whether this Borel set b contains zero or not. If the Borel set B does not contain zero, then the event that the indicator here, this cutoff indicator that tau is less than or equal to n times z is in B, can be written as the intersection of the event that z is in B with the event that tau is less than or equal to n. If B doesn't contain zero, then these will be precisely equal. You'll always get one containment, but if Z is allowed to take the value zero, then this whole thing could be zero and therefore in B, even if this fails to be true. But in this zero not in B case, we get that intersection. And by our assumption from part one, that is in Fn. On the other hand, if B is actually equal to the set zero, then this cutoff of z is not equal to zero if and only if z is not equal to zero and tau is less than or equal to n. Otherwise, you get zero in either case. And again, by our assumption from part one, that's going to be in fn. So by putting those together, taking unions, it follows that the indicator that tau is less than or equal to n times z is fn measurable. And that is exactly what we needed to show for part two. For part three, we can just apply part two, noting that this cutoff is equal to this cutoff minus this one. And this one is in fn by part two. This one's in fn minus one, which is contained in fn by part two. And so that gives us part three. Now, suppose that that third condition holds. We'd like to conclude 
that our random variable z can actually be achieved as a stopped process or some process y. And indeed we can, quite trivially, just by taking that process yn to be the indicator of the event that tau equals n times z. Part three was precisely the statement that this process is adapted. And of course, if we stop that process at the stopping time tau, well, that's equal to the indicator of the set of all omega for which tau of omega is equal to tau of omega times z of omega, which is just z of omega. And so indeed, z is a stopped process. So that shows actually so far the converse of what we started out by wanting to show. If z is f tau measurable, then it is a stopped process. We now want to see the converse to complete this equivalence. Any stopped process is, in fact, f tau measurable. To see that, we start by noting that if I have an adapted process yn, and I stop it at time tau, well, since this is real valued, I can just write that as a sum over all k less than or equal to infinity of the indicator of the event that tau equals k times yk. In fact, we don't really need to write this as a sum. This is just a definition by cases, since these are disjoint events. Now, we'd like to show that this is f tau measurable, and since it's a sum, it suffices to show that each of the terms is f tau measurable. In other words, if we drop the k from yk and write this as w, what we need to show is that if we have any fk measurable random variable w and I cut it off by the event that tau equals k, then the result is f tau measurable. Well, in fact, it will suffice to prove that in the special case where w isn't any old fk random variable, but is just the indicator of an fk set. As usual, to show measurability, it suffices to show that, if you like, by Dinkin's multiplicative systems theorem, or even just by the pi lambda theorem. Well, let's check that then. w times the indicator of the event that tau equals k is this product of indicators. And that is, of course, the indicator of the intersection. And so to show that that is f tau measurable, it suffices to check that that intersection is in f tau. But now we'll do what amounts to this same calculation one more time. If I take that intersection and intersect it with the event that tau equals n, for any n, that is equal to the empty set if k is not equal to n, since k can't both equal k and n if n is not k, and is equal to e intersected with the event that tau equals n if k equals n. And of course, both of those are in fn since e was taken to be in fk, which is fn. So, tracing back up that chain of simplifications, that does show that if I have an adapted real-valued process and I stop it at a stopping time, it will be f tau measurable. Now, in that case, we used a few tricks using addition and subtraction in the real line that required our random variable and our process to be real valued, but that was an artifice. In fact, you can prove quickly from here that if xn is any adapted process taking values in any state space, and tau is, let's say, a finite stopping time to avoid having to define x at infinity, then the stopped process x tau is indeed f tau measurable. And to check that, we just need to see that the preimage under x tau of any measurable set b is in f tau. But of course, we can write this as the indicator function of b composed with x tau preimage at 1. And this is y tau, where yn is the process defined by indicator of b composed with xn. And that is an adapted process since xn is adapted. 
And so, by the previous theorem, we find that this is in f tau, concluding the proof.